In our previous lecture, we developed the expression for fixed first law, which uh, pertained to steady state diffusion, if you remember. So that looked like J, the flux, was equal to the negative of the diffusion coefficient times the concentration gradient. So although fixed law is always valid, fixed first law rather is always valid, so let's write that down so this isn't correcting that. Uh, so a fixed first law is always valid. Uh, but it's not always very convenient. In particular, if the concentration gradient is changing with time. Okay? And this is the case of non-steady state diffusion. Or maybe we'll just call it transient. Okay? And so what are we really interested in the case of non-steady state diffusion? Well, we're interested really in how the concentration is changing with time. So in the case of transient diffusion, uh, we're interested in how the concentration changes with time. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we're going to do something similar to what we did with fixed first law. We're going to consider um, the change in concentration, in this case, of a control volume. Okay. So let me draw a control volume. This is my control volume cylinder, right? Something like this. Okay, there's my there's my cylinder. Uh, our x-axis is going to just pass through the center. This is still a 1D case. This has some cross-sectional area A. And now I'm just going to look at a control volume, let's say, defined by this region here, right, where this distance is delta x, okay? So this location will be x, and this location will be x plus delta x, right? So the control volume is is this region inside here, right? What's what's We want to know how does the concentration change, okay? So let's just say the change in the concentration in that control volume, maybe I'll label that here as the control volume. So the change in concentration in the control volume, uh, this, and then and we need to specify uh, uh, over some time, right? So during some time delta t uh, is going to be given as follows. We'll say that the change in the concentration delta c is going to be equal to the change in the number of atoms per unit volume, right? And the volume in this case is going to be a times delta x. All right, let's call that equation one. Well, what, what can we say now? Well, we know that we can say something about delta N just from the definition of flux, right? So from the definition of flux, which in the previous lecture we defined as J, um, we can write delta N as follows. Right, so delta N, the change in the number of atoms, what, what must that look like? Well, that must be the amount of atoms that flows across the boundary defined by x, right, in the positive direction. So we'll call that delta n in the plus direction. And then since flux is defined positively, we're going to we want to know how many atoms are flowing in from this x plus delta x boundary now in the other direction because that's putting us into the control volume. So we'll say minus delta n minus. So that's in the opposite direction. And we can define these from our definition of flux. That is the flux at the position x uh, times the area, right? Because the flux is per unit area per unit time. And so we also have a per unit time multiplier. And that gives us our delta n plus. And for our delta n minus, it's just going to be j. Now we're going to evaluate it at x plus delta x, right? Uh, again, times a delta t. Call that equation 2. Now we're going to go ahead and just substitute 2 into 1. And we can write that the change in the concentration is going to be equal to J evaluated at X times A delta T minus J evaluated at X plus delta X times A delta T, right, divided by 
from equation one, we have a delta x. Call that equation three. Now let's go ahead and divide by delta t. Okay, so dividing, so divide equation three by delta t. And we now have del c del t is equal to, and also up here my a's will cancel, right? So I end up with this being j of x minus j of x plus delta x divided by delta x. Let me let me just uh, write this a little differently. Uh, switch, uh, just take a sign change here and say this is negative of j of x plus delta x minus j of x over delta x, right? Call that equation four. So now what we're going to do is what we have done in the past. We're going to take the limit as delta t goes to zero and the limit as delta x goes to zero. And what happens when we take the limit? Well, this quantity here as delta t goes to zero, uh, delta c is going to go there at the same rate. This quantity then turns into a derivative. And this quantity here is the definition of a derivative, right? So uh, when we do that, we end up being able to write the partial of c with respect to t is equal to negative partial of j with respect to x. Let's call that equation 5. Now let's go back and th remember what fixed first law was. Okay, so recall fixed first law. Right, which said j is equal to negative d del c del x. Call that equation 6. Now just substitute 6 into 5. And when we do that, we end up with del c del t is equal to, so our negatives are going to cancel here. And so we'll be able to write del del x of d del c del x. Okay. That is fix second law. Call this equation 7. What is this telling us? Well, it's telling us that we can tell how fast the concentration in any location changes by what uh, by the spatial distribution of the concentration. Right now it's not the concentration gradient, it's actually the, uh, well, it'll be the curvature of the concentration, right? And how about the case where the diffusion coefficient d is constant? Well, if the diffusion coefficient is constant, and we can pull it outside the derivative, right? And we can write that this is partial C with respect to T is equal to D times the partial squared C with respect to X squared. Okay. This is also an expression of fixed second law. Okay. Let's call that equation eight. So what we see is that we have a, now a partial differential equation that relates how fast the concentration changes to the, the second derivative in space of the concentration, right? So let me give you a final remark. Uh, you likely have not seen this class of problems in your mathematics background. Um, so I'll just say that in the transient case, uh, our, our solution to how the concentration changes is described by a partial differ differential equation. Okay? And in the case of a partial differential equation, it's not like an ordinary differ differential equation that, you've prob that you're probably used to, where we have sort of a very uh, fixed and systematic uh, solution technique. Uh, the solution for this is actually complicated, and the approach that you take is going to depend on the boundary condition. Okay, so I'll just say the solution is complicated to this. Uh, and the approach depends on the boundary condition. Okay, don't panic. Uh, what we're going to do in this class is we're only going to focus on one, uh, one type of boundary condition problems. We're, uh, and we'll talk about that uh, in the next lecture. And so I'll just give you the solution to that particular boundary problem. It's going to be relevant to solving problems like 
uh, that we would need for uh, carburization, let's say, of uh, for case hardening uh, a gear made of steel, for example. So we'll uh, cover that, but this is this is how we get to the equation that we're going to ultimately solve, and this is also um, uh, just kind of gives you a, a flavor for uh, what equations are involved in in um, uh, describing diffusion in materials.